Okay, so this video for Chem 1211 is going to be about hybridization and bonding. Specifically, I want to take a look at carbon dioxide that you should be able to draw the Lewis structure for. And when you draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, you should see that there are two double bonds to this carbon. So what's going on here in terms of the orbitals? Well, if we just had the orbitals and they could point at each other and they could overlap, then best case scenario is you would actually form two bonds on the same side of the molecule, which could be your double bond. And then it would only be able to form two other bonds and those two other bonds would have to be pointing at 90 degrees to each other and they would technically be at 90 degrees to that double bond with the oxygen and they themselves would be at 90 degrees to each other so here's one pointing forwards and backwards here's one pointing up and down and here's one pointing left and right well that doesn't make much sense with what we observe for carbon dioxide which is a linear molecule with 180 degrees so what's going on here is that instead of simply taking the orbitals as they are we're actually mixing these orbitals up a little bit or hybridizing them and so an s orbital is a sphere and a p orbital points along one of the axes and we're going to take the one that points along this axis for first or only for this video now when we look at these orbitals, we might give them signs, and the signs are going to actually come from doing something with the quantum wave function. In the case of an s orbital, we're going to think of that as having a positive sign. In the case of the p orbital, we're going to think of that as having one side positive and the other negative. And so we have two choices with these two orbitals. If you think back to waves and you think about how waves interact with each other, you can have interference between those waves. You can have constructive interference and destructive interference. So if we add these two orbitals together and we're adding the signs, then which side should get larger? The right side should get larger, which means that the left side should get smaller. And that is what happens. When we take one of those s orbitals and one of those p orbitals and hybridize them together, then we get a single, and this is just one of them, this is an sp orbital, okay? And one side is positive and the other is negative. Now if we could do that from addition, we should also be able to subtract. And if we subtract those, then what's going to happen? then the left side is going to get larger. In fact, we're actually going to change the signs. If we're subtracting a negative, then we're actually adding a positive. So this side gets larger and is still positive, but this side where we're subtracting a positive from the positive is going to get smaller and it's going to have the negative sign. Now this is also an sp hybrid orbital. Notice if we take two orbitals, an S and a P, and we hybridize them, then we get two orbitals out from that process. Those two SP orbitals are pointing directly away from each other, 180 degrees apart. Now I chose this carbon dioxide molecule for a reason, because this carbon here is now going to have these two SP orbitals. This is an SP and this is an SP. And I'm only choosing to draw the positive lobes from these two orbitals since those are the ones that are pointing out pretty far and that are going to be over, able to overlap with the orbitals from the oxygen, whatever the hybridization is of the oxygen. Now, I also specifically chose carbon dioxide because if the carbon is hybridized for an SP, then that means that there are still two P orbitals left over like they're shown in the three-dimensional structure up here at the top where one of those p orbitals on the carbon is pointing straight up and straight down and the other p orbital on that carbon right now is pointing forwards and backwards now these oxygens 
as we've already shown in the Lewis structure, supposedly form double bonds with that carbon. Now the overlap here between the orbitals represents a sigma bond, which is the same as a single bond. Any single bond that we have, any bond, double, triple, whatever, is always going to start out with a sigma bond. Sigma. So with the sigma bond there, to be able to form a double bond, we have to have another pair of orbitals that overlap. And that pair of orbitals have to overlap in parallel. And so on this oxygen here, there's another p orbital, which is actually pointing forwards and backwards. And that p orbital is overlapping behind and in front of the molecule with that p orbital on the carbon that is also pointing forwards and backwards. And so on the opposite oxygen, on the other end, there is also still a p orbital pointing up and pointing down. And that p orbital on the other oxygen is overlapping with the p orbital on the carbon that is pointing up and pointing down. And so it's difficult to see three-dimensionally. There are much better illustrations on Top Hat or in the slides that are already posted. But this specifically is one example of how hybridization of orbitals happens and why two orbitals in, there's one, there's two, man why one and two orbitals, that's the second, give us two hybrid orbitals out. And the carbon dioxide may be the easiest one to see this with in the directions that these orbitals point in. If you start to hybridize more than just two orbitals, then the orbitals start to point in multiple directions and things start to get pretty interesting. For instance, on the oxygens in carbon dioxide, if this carbon was already an sp carbon and notice it had two p orbitals that were not hybridized what are the oxygens going to have in terms of hybridization hopefully you said sp2 because each of these oxygens only needs one p orbital to be unhybridized that means that the other orbitals on this oxygen are actually pointing like trigonal planar. So there's the one that's overlapping with the carbon, there's one pointing backwards, and there's another one there. And so all of these are 120 degrees apart. That's sp2, which we would think of as being trigonal planar. Now, this is where the lone pairs are going to be. And in fact, this one that's 120 degrees on this side is pointing up. This one is pointing down. Notice that the p orbital that's overlapping is pointing forwards and backwards. This other oxygen is going to be in the same situation. It's also sp2 because there's one p orbital that's left out that's unhybridized. But this p orbital that's unhybridized is pointing straight up and straight down. And this other sp2 hybrid orbital is already pointing towards the carbon. So the only other directions where the other two can point are backwards and forwards. So if we were showing dashes, the one going backwards would have the dashes and the one coming forwards would have the wedge. What this means is that these electrons on the ends of the CO2 the planes are pointing at 90 degrees to each other. So there's a plane here that these electrons form. If this electron pair is pointing up and this electron pair is pointing down, and those two points along with the central atom, the oxygen, and the carbon, there's this plane here that's pointing straight up and straight down that the carbon, the oxygen, and these two lone pairs are all on. The plane on the other side that passes through the carbon and the oxygen and the lone pairs is actually pointing forwards and backwards. And I'm going to try to do a perspective here for that plane. And that plane is at 90 degrees to the other plane where the electrons, where the lone pair electrons are compared to the carbon and the oxygen.